So this is the uh, lecture on uh, epidemiology. So we start with a case for the 19th century uh, cholera outbreak in London. It, this may seem very, very old case. It still happens. The most recent one is actually happened uh, two years ago. Uh, when did the, the Haitian uh, cholera outbreak uh, happen? Four years ago? Uh, anyhow, but it happened. <laughs> I discussed that in the class. So, uh, okay. So, so you may, but we use this one because this one is well studied, and we have a lot of document the data. And uh, if you Google YouTube, there's a lot of video on it as well. So, the for the Haitian cholera, uh, in maybe later on, there's also a lot of uh, data available. In fact, I even see people using a uh, cell phone data to track the spread of cholera virus because the apparently you can that the spread of the cholera is actually you, you can you can correlate it with the water flow or human flow is actually correlated with human flow so the indication is the sanitation is probably a problem so it's since human carrying this uh, and spreading the virus it shows that the sanitation is too bad this to happen. Okay, but this is the, uh, wow, how many years ago? Uh, 18, that's uh, 160 some years ago. This is, a, this is a problem 160 years ago and and today is still a problem. Okay, so there are a few questions we want to answer for this. Uh, infectious agent, what's the source of the out? How was the source of the outbreak identified? Uh, what's the, if you may, what is the societal impact of this case? Or for your own purpose, what, what, is, what is the impact of this case? So uh, let me see what I, that's probably a video. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it looks like that, that should be a video. Uh, Let me see how long this is. 18 minutes. I'm going to. I'm not going to play all this, but Ros maybe Smith, part of it. Hold on, hold on. Uh, the audio is not on. Uh. Okay, so John Snow, pioneer anesthesiologist and epidemiologist. I actually didn't know he, he spoke. <laughs> so, okay. Live near down. 
and it's the start of the idea that living on high places protects you. So you get in London the Vale of Heath back in, in Hampstead, where um, the wealthy go to live, whereas the poor are living near the river. And, uh, and of course, you were right in a way. If you were poor and living by the river, you probably had very poor drainage, you probably had very poor diet, and so you probably did get more illnesses. So were they arrived for the wrong reason? They arrived, right, but that's often the case. And with the myasma theory, the cleaning up that they did was also right for the wrong reasons. Because um, what they started to do, they realised that all this sewage and this open streets, I mean, this street, Fifth Street, if we were um, in it in the early 1800s, there'd probably be a big gully down the centre, full of um, horse manure, there'd be, of course, loads of animals. Remember, um, all fresh meat has to be kept within the city, we don't have refrigeration, so there would be the occasional cattle, pigs going through, obviously dogs, cats, so basically a lot of refuse. And people, um, even then, said, no, this is disgusting, this must be making us ill. And you can see how that makes a lot of sense to humans. We have a very, very sensitive sense of smell. So the, the John Snow blue flag, it says, and you said this, and epidemiology. Yes. And you said that, that would have been a, a term which existed at the time. What about epidemiology? Epidemiologists didn't exist at the time. In fact, the word epidemic, originally from the French epidemie, it is in Britain that we first start to hear the um, epidemiology and epidemiologists being used, and um, very much being applied to... OK, so we pretty much can answer part of the question now. Uh, let me see, what, where, where did the, the slide go? Oh, okay. So, uh, let me see. Well, actually, here's a map of the, 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 whole, the whole thing so Jon Snow uh, doesn't even know a uh, microbe exists. And he doesn't have a lot of modern uh, medical research I instrument. The whole thing is done basically by a uh, computational method, although he probably did by hand, I, I couldn't imagine. So, so which one do you think is the right answer? Well, if it's today, uh, that's probably number uh, A. In fact, in the Haitian outbreak, and uh, people claim it's uh, the UN keeps peacekeeper brought the cholera uh, there because they, we can sequence the cholera and then match the, the people. It turned out match the strain in Asia, and they are, they are Nepalese UN keepers there. So it's kind of hard to refute that. Uh, evidence. So A is something we can do it today, but not in the 1900s. Uh, microscope example. I guess in theory he can do this. Uh, I don't re I don't remember when did the microscope invented. Uh, Levin hook. That's when. Uh, I guess I should, but <laughs> I forgot the timing. So he may or may not do this, but. Uh, but that's not what he did. Chemical analysis of sample, it's, it's basically I try to make our four choices. <laughs> OK, so there, that's just left a B. Uh, in fact, uh, you can look at the map, kind of start to understand why that's the case. So that's actually basically the map he, he used. And that's the neighborhood. So all those bars that are patient with uh, color. Uh, in fact, I think those are death. So those are the death caused by color. And then, uh, now here's the interesting part. I don't know why he put, start to study the water pump. The, all those, uh, all those uh, square brackets, those are water pump. So he somehow noticed the association of those case and water pump. So this is basically called spatial uh, clustering analysis. Uh, well, he actually did not know. Uh, Cholera even exists when he did this. So, but somehow he reached the right conclusion. So that's really the <laughs> the the brilliance of this guy. <laughs> yeah, he knew nothing about the microbiology of this, but he actually drew a right conclusion of this. Yeah. So, well, this is a map. Uh, that 
that's how he reached his conclusion. So somehow he noticed the water pump uh, on this map, and he noticed the high uh, incidence of those cases here. Uh, it turns out uh, not every case is consistent with this. In fact, if I remember correctly, in some of the video, they, they mentioned there is a monastery near the, the, the water pump at the study here. But now the monks actually got cholera. The reason is because the monk, uh, they take the water and then they make a beer or wine from it. And the fermentation process kill, generate the ethanol actually kill the cholera. So <laughs> there is a good reason for that. So that's actually a, a, another interesting story. So yeast actually is good for the monks because it, it's somehow during the fermentation process actually kill some germs in the water. Uh, well. So, but in any case, even though I, I think he just ignored uh, the, those kind of uh, outline, and then he just look at the bigger picture. There's basically more people here. There's a lot of people pass away near this water pump. So that's that's his argument. And you also see some other odd cases like this one. It's closer to the water pump at the top, and there are. In the, uh, there are also some uh, story why this happened. It turns out that uh, some people prefer, say, that one particular water pump has better taste than other water pump. So some household tend to ask their servant carry water from a particular water pump. Exactly, that also happens. So <laughs> that's a uh, if you. If you really had a time, I'll go over the, the video. You, you'll actually see a lot of <laughs> interesting story behind this. Uh, I often listen to it when I was driving, which is probably a bad habit because it's kind of destructive. <laughs> but it's actually gave me a lot of background information on this. So this is a start of which one? Yeah, this, this basically, uh, as the video said, uh, before this, people didn't even have this uh, word of epidemiology. It's only because of John Snow, we have this word epidemiology, and you have to study it. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So now, how, w once we have this uh, uh, patient uh, data and the location of water. Uh, is, I didn't know why he, why John Snow want to study the water pump, but there, there may be some other uh, evidence he, he start to think the water pump is related. But, but let's just start to analyze the water pump here. So what's, um, some of you probably took some basic studies. If you want to say, if we want to say one of the water pump at the, at the center, that water pump, is the cause of the cholera outbreak. What kind of uh, things we need to do to, to make that statement? Uh, sorry, I cannot hear. Uh, yeah, you, you want to say that is a, that water pump is the cause of the outbreak of this. So yeah. What? There, is there more than one water pump? Yes. So I did, I did read, uh, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here. There's multiple water pumps. Right. There's so you would compare that one to the, the, like, the rest of them. Uh, I guess if you, if you will really work as a CSA, we can trace everything back. Uh, I'm actually looking for a very simple, simple way. So all you need to do is something called p-value. Basically, uh, you, you, you are going to assume this water pump caused the outbreak of all those uh, deaths, those the bars, black, dark, black bars, right? So the, well, you basically say, if we can generate a p-value, is that p-value significant or not? If it's not significant, it basically means the null hypothesis, which means 
any other water pump or even not even water pump can cause this then it that's not a big deal anymore right but if we so the, the null hypothesis will be uh, the water pump at the at the center is not a cause of the disease and your our alternative hypothesis will be the water pump at the middle is the cause of the disease so we have the null hypothesis we have the alternative hypothesis and what we really want is a uh, is the bigger p value or small p value Smaller. yeah small p value basically says the null hypothesis is has a very, very small chance to explain what's observed, and it, our theory has a better chance to do this. That's basically the, we are looking for a very small p-value here. Compare the now and the alternative. That's, that's actually, uh, I'm not sure exactly how John Snow do, did this, but this is what we are going to do today, so. Okay, so, uh, now, you, you all have a map there. So what do you think the, the chance of the now, how do we find out the, the chance of the now hypothesis to explain the cholera outbreak on this map? You have, you have this map. Right, so I'm, I'm going to ask you, if I, if I use a marker, well, I probably should have had a red mark, because the next slide I'm going to use it. Uh, so I'm going to label the, at the middle, that's the red dot. That's our, so, that's our alternative hypothesis. The, our, our theory is that that red dot caused all those black bars on this map. The null hypothesis is not that red dot. It's just say, any other thing. Right? But how do we find out uh, the null hypothesis? What's the p-value for the null hypothesis to, to explain this? How do we find out that p-value? Yeah, yes. some kind of a test. How do we do that? Uh, so I'm going to take a different color. Let's say, let's say, uh, what do you think is the random? The null hypothesis basically means random. How, how do you put this? Basically, we need to put those random bar, uh, put those black bars randomly on the map. How do we do that? How, how do we put those black bars randomly on this map? Uh, yeah, so, some of you mentioned random sampling. Okay, so let me see. Oops, how did that happen? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I pulled the cable out. I was wondering what's happened. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. When I was working, I pulled the cable out. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so, let me see. Uh, how do we put the, put the uh, bar? You basically, well, I have the map, I just close my eye and then I mark. Right? That's basically the random hypothesis. You have the map, uh, without those bars, you just, without looking at it, you just randomly put it on the map. That's the random. Yeah. You, you take all this bar out of the map and then just put them back. And that's the random hypothesis. That's a null hypothesis. And what we see on this map is actually the observation. So we just need to compare our observation with all those random things. We, we close our eye, put it on the map. So if, we, if there's a chance we do that randomly, actually can generate a map, that chance is what? Right. So, so we, we, we just, without looking at it, put everything on the map. Mm -hmm. Right. And then the chance that we see this observed map based from that process is something called p-value. <laughs> that's basically is p-value. <laughs> yeah. So that's actually how p-value is going to be calculated. So in... So we, you can you, so basically you can do that manually, but you you, you can print out a hundred say blank map and just randomly dot it, dot it a hundred times, and then you compare that a hundred for another hundred. Does it ever happen? You can see a map like this. Yes. The chance of that will be 
almost zero actually. <laughs> so if you do this randomly, I see a map like this, it's, it should be almost random, almost zero. The chance of that happening is very, very small. But how can we do this uh, uh, rigorously? Or actually get the, let me see, do I have this? No, I'm going to switch to my uh, R code to do this simulation. So, Okay, so let's see. In fact, on the Moodle side, you, you should see Oops, gee, that's not what I want to do. Uh, so on the Moodle side, there should be a zip file, say, zip file for Lon London cholera case. If you download one data, uh, it's a, a contain the R code and the data for that. Now. So it's basically something like this. So you had the R code for uh, simulation and data analysis data analysis, and also the death, there's a file called death, that's basically the, the patient uh, location data, the, well, not patient anymore, they, they basically uh, death caused by cholera. And there are also the location of the water pumps. And there's also the map itself. Uh, so if we double click on uh, the, if you double click on that, you should Open that R file in R Studio, or if you if you don't, you should directly open it from R Studio. So, okay. Now the first step to run any R code with data, you you should first set the the working directory to the source file. Now in my case, I know it where it is, so I can just type the, the directory there. And Make sure the directory is clean and list all the file. Uh, that's the once you can see all the file, that means we are working in the right directory. So this is read in the pump location. So if you, if you click on the right, you see the there are well there are thirteen water pumps on this map. Uh, those are their coordinate, x and y. Uh, the map, if we go back to the map, uh, yeah. so the horizontal will be x, the vertical will be y. And so for this one, will be, they will give a location. So someone has mapped this location. Yeah. Digitize this data for us. So. OK, so that's the water pump. And then those are the uh, death location of the death caused by the cholera. Uh, there are 578 deaths caused by cholera in this neighborhood alone. So, uh, those are just uh, some simple statement to look at the uh, distribution of the data. Now, people will say, Picture says a thousand words. Those numbers are nice for us to analyze. But how do we uh, look at the data here? Whoops. Uh, oh, I know because the screen resolution is not helping here. So let me see. The margin is too big. I need to because the the resolution of projector. I need to probably decrease the sound a little bit. Sorry. Uh, nine. Okay, let's do this again. This one is still not working. Uh, uh, that's too bad. Uh, I'm going to generate a PDF file. Uh, temp one. Okay, so it will going to print out to a PDF file called temp.1. And then I'm looking at the temp.1 to see the plot. Okay, so that's basically the, the actual distribution of a death on the map, uh, except I, there's no street. Uh, uh, there's no uh, road there. But and this is nice, but if we, we, if we put a water pump there, that would be even better, right? So let's do this again. So uh, 
Okay, um, let's see. Uh, okay, now this time. This time I put the water pump I study as red, the rest of the water pump I put it as green. And the blue I again at a death cost by cholera. Now for for most of the so our main hypothesis is basically say it is that red water pump caused the, this uh, outbreak of cholera. And so I'm going to basically use that to calculate. So how do we, for, for most of the uh, statistical type, you need to calculate some number and compare it with the random distribution. The, the, way, the way I'm going to do this is to calculate the average distance of those water pump to all those number of deaths on the map. So, so here. The basic idea is, so this is the water pump cause all this death, but I'm going to compare the distance from this red water pump to, the, to all those uh, black bars. Compare, calculate the distance. How, how do we measure the distance on the map? We measure the direct distance. In, there's no Google map here. Basically, uh, measure the direct distance between, say, if, if they the Death here. I'm going to measure the direct distance. Whoops, sorry. Uh, from this point to the water pump, the and that distance will be the Euclidean distance. So, so if you have the if we have the x and y on x y direction, you have x y. You have two point. The distance basically will be exactly. Uh, it's basically the yeah it you just need to find out of those the, the difference on the two axes and then calculate the direct distance so okay so so this is basically what I did in this line uh, now uh, in this case, I, I'm actually calculating the average distance because there are 500, almost 600 deaths on this map. I'm, I'm going to calculate the average distance of, of every death, every, every dead person to that red water pump. And so, so what I did is, this is calculate all the distance for every individual, and then I sum them up and divide it by the total number of a per a dead person in this map. I calculate the average distance to that red water pump. So, let me see. After I calculated this line, uh, there's a number here. It's 2.28. That's the. If you if you calculate it by hand, you should get the same number. If you measure this on the map, you measure all the distance, you sum up calculate the average, that should be the same number. Yeah. So, but here I'm basically doing this, uh, using R to do this. Now, I'm going to, so this is our, uh, the observation. Now I'm going to calculate the p-value, the, basically the null hypothesis. So, many of you probably want to do, well, some of you, I have heard a lot, many of you say, I want to do a master in public health. You better learn this if you want to do that. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, in fact, at Emory, they they offer like a three or four courses on, on how to use R to do data analysis. Does public health use R, or is there different ones? Uh, you can also use SARS. Uh, SARS, which is a proprietary software, S A S, but R is a free one. You can run it anywhere. The SARS you have to buy, and usually there's a license. Now, there's a there's one thing uh, about SaaS R cannot do because if you involve in some business deal, people want to use someone they can sue for. R is uh, open source free, and nobody can sue R for some mistake they made. But if people don't know how to use SaaS and they made a mistake, they can sue SaaS for their own mistake. So <laughs> SaaS is the company behind it. <laughs> so so FDA actually approved SaaS as 
I think because of some business still there. <laughs> that's uh, that's one thing SaaS can do, but R certainly doesn't do that. <laughs> so okay, anyhow, that's probably a bad joke, but uh, so in, I'm going to if if I want to do this for all those now hypothesis. Remember, we are going to for to to have the now hypothesis, we need to have a distribution. We need to do a hundred times, a thousand times, and sometimes millions of times to, to for the for the now distribution. So I'm not going to do it one line, another line, I write a ten thousand lines. So what I want to do is I first write a, a function, basically define the procedure, and then I'm going to use a loop automation to do this. I'm going to ask the computer to do this, whether it's a hundred times, a thousand times, even ten thousand, ten million times for me. Instead, of I'm, I'm doing it line by line, say one, two, three, <laughs> that would be pretty boring anyway. So, okay, so what I'm trying to do here, basically define a function to do, to calculate the distance automatically with respect to that red water pump. Right? And then, well, uh, I'm actually a bit cautious here to make sure my function actually does what it is supposed to do, double check. This actually indeed gave that 2.28 distance I, I just calculated. And then I'm going to, this is basically, I'm going to randomly put all those death events on the map. The way I'm doing this basically using random number generator. I, I randomly assign this dot on the map. Uh, there will be two, each dot will be assigned an X and a Y, basically horizontal location and a vertical location. I randomly put this dot on the map. That's I'm going to do this for all this uh, uh, death event. And after I've done this, I, I'm going to calculate the random this, the average of, of all those random deaths to that red pump. So there, and you can actually see on the right, the observation is 2.28. After I randomly put all this data on the map, the average distance is 4.01. It is much larger than the observation, right? But all this is not a distribution. I just did one example of the random distribution. I need to do a lot more to actually get the p-value. So that's just to double check. Okay. We. If we want to know something is significant or not, we need to have a distribution, a whole a lot of a, more than just one simulation to, to actually calculate that p-value. So in this case, to save some time, I'm going to run 1,000 times. That's 1E3, they say 1,000 times. And now we're going to generate a distribution of those random distance to the red path. And then I just use a for loop. Uh, the for loop, basically, I'm going to do it, say, a thousand times. Every time, I'm going to simulate that x and y for all those random deaths I put on the map. And then I'm going to use the function I just defined, calculate the average distance of, the, of all those random deaths to the red pump. And after that, I should have the distribution of this. So it's actually, for a thousand simulation, takes less than one second to finish. Then I can plot out this distribution. Now uh, here's trouble again. Uh, I don't have enough space to sh to display this map. So I'm going to again put this into a PDF file. So PDF. Uh, this will be histo PDF histogram. Okay. Okay. So this is basically what I. Uh, so we. This is basically is a random distribution. This is from that a thousand a simulation I just finished. The distribution of all those average random deaths to the red pump is about. Somewhere on 4.0 and spread out. The actual observation is here. It's about 2.2 something. So what's, what is the p-value for, for the null hypothesis to 
give that observation here. We just need to count how many times here actually can give that. In this case, it's zero. It's none of those 100 simulations actually give that observation. So the p-value should be, I, what's the p-value here, actually? I simulated 1,000 times, and now that 1,000 times actually give the observation, the p-value should be less than one out of a thousand. That's, right. That's the p-value. We don't know the actual p-value, but we know it's smaller than one out of a thousand. Because not one showed up on the observed. Yeah, not, not one even close to this. That's basically the p-value is estimated. Yeah. So if one was by 2.5, would we count it as one or not? If it's two point five, is still not. It has to be uh, to the left of the observation. Then we will count. So this is called one tail the test. This is left tail. It really doesn't matter. If you, you, if you, the observation is on the right hand side, we count the right hand side. So this for this p value, there's nothing to the left of the red arrow. That means we uh, say we. I mean. We can only observe at least one, so it should be less than one out of a thousand. So if, if we want to give an even better estimation, sometimes if, if you look at a human study, they, they have the p-value, say, one out of a million, those kind of things. So that means we need to increase our simulation to how many times? Yeah, a million times. Yeah, so sometimes we do it even, even more than that to, to get this number. Yeah. So I, in my case, if I want to simulate to a million, all I need to change is just here. Change this to one million. Then I'll have a much better p-value than the current estimation. Can you see it? No, this guy should take a while to write. <laughs> so yeah, if you, if, you, if you download everything, do it uh, on your own, I can give you a bonus point. If you, in fact, uh, I will put something like this in the in the take home exam. If someone can do this, I will give you flexible bonus point enough to change something. Yeah. If I just give you bonus point, it doesn't change anything qualitatively in the end. It's not it's not meaningful anyway. So, but if people can do this, I will give at least a meaningful bonus point to move the letter grade a little bit. Right. So, if people can do this. So, okay. The same thing for for other bonus point. So, if you are not, if you do not like your current grade, you can. I mean, <laughs> you had to think of some effort to do, and I need some help in the lab as well. So, okay. So, let me see. I I think I, it's a good time for me to stop the recording. So. <laughs>